This video is about using one of those 2,500 pound capacity Badland winches from Harbor Freight to turn the chute on my snowblower. Now I've already taken apart, you can see here there's the uh, remote control box and the cable is off the reel and um, I actually tested it first and then uh, took it apart before starting videoing this because uh, the warranty is definitely shot now. Um, so, you know, there I removed that bracket there that holds the other side of the spool. And I was really surprised the way the spool is driven and uh, works. You can see it's a cast aluminum. It's a fairly soft aluminum. It has a spline in there. And then there's a, um, a planetary gear system in the motor there. And there's actually just a short piece of a um, spline. Looks like a gear there that actually um, goes in and out to drive the spool. So, um, normally the spool and the, um, that motor gear there are, um, hooked together by that, uh, short piece of spline there. And that's what keeps the spool turning and actually, um, holds all the pressure and puts the pressure on it. A little knob on the end there that you actually pull to, uh, freewheel the winch when you want the spool to, um, let cable out without actually having to use a motor and um, there you can see it's just that little gear that slides in and out so a little bit of a surprise the way they did it but um, you know it's just going to be a fun job to modify this because I've uh, wanted to use these for some other projects too so I decided I'd try one. First thing I did is I took that spool and I mounted it in my old uh, South Bend lathe there and decided to try to cut it down to a proper length for what I'm going to be doing with it. Now inside there, there's a, uh, a pocket with some four little things that center it, center that gear and uh, actually hold a spring in there. So I'll show you in a little while later, but first I started cutting it off and I made sure that I left enough room for the uh, stub of the shaft that I have and also for the spring to hold the gear in place. I just used a, a cut off tool there and you know let it let the lathe cut it off and it did kick out a little bit because it is really soft metal so it's kind of hard to grab in the lathe. So there's what it looks like there those uh those four wings there that actually hold everything centered and hold the spring in place. Now I went back and I used that center on the end there and just pulled that up and got it locked down in the chuck again really good and tight and centered this time because I had to take a boring bar and go in and open up a uh, the opening big enough for the little shaft that sticks out on the snowblower. Now I couldn't just use a drill because it was a metric size so I had to use a boring bar and go from there and this makes it easy to hit any kind of diameter that you want. Takes a couple minutes to set up, and you just have. Um, I'm just using a boring bar that's made for the Bridgeport boring head, mounted in one of those manual lathe holders. And it's an easy job to go in and just cut that pocket to the right size for the shaft. You can see that nothing's really round there or centered or anything, so that's why I'm trying to use that bearing surface to hold it in the chuck there and uh, you know machining right off of that. So it didn't take long to do a couple passes in there and start to get the uh, size just about right. This is a really a very soft aluminum from what I'm seeing here. I'm surprised they, that they actually can hold a 2500 pound load with this. So I, I had another shaft off the snowblower that was the exact same diameter so I just decided to try that and it was still a little bit snug so I just ran the boring bar through there again once more without moving it and cleaned it up so everything uh, just fit perfect. And there you can see that it just slips in there it's a perfect fit. Now the stub sticking out of the snowblower had a uh, quarter inch hole that was about maybe 3 sixteenths deep that the set screw on the existing collar locked in. So I tried to match that the best that I could. And, um, here I'm just starting to drill for a quarter twenty set screw that I'm gonna tap in there. So I first drilled it with the pilot hole and now I'm just gonna run a tap in there. 
Um, and like I've said before, this is a real soft aluminum here, so I'm not sure if it's going to hold permanently or not. I'll see over time. I think it will because it's just kind of the set screw is acting as a shear pin. And there you can see I got my wood stove running out here in the shop today. It was another cool rainy day, so that's why I'm doing this. But the uh, set screw is actually used as a shear pin almost. So for now, I'm going to go with that. And if I have a problem later, I'll go through and just drill it right through and put a roll pin in. So you can see the spring still is retained in there and the, everything fits nice. And that's what I'm winding up with to be the drive system. Now I decided I wanted to put a seal on it also, just in case there was any moisture or snow or anything. I've seen, you know, what what it can do to a drive system, especially looking at that air and how that thing would uh, just get wet, lock up, and slip, and freeze. And So I figured that I'd just clean off the back of this, those little ribs that were in the back of this uh, spool section here. And just get a nice flat surface in there so I could go back and add a seal to it. And I found some weather stripping seal that was 316 thick that was just a perfect fit. So I put a, a ring around the outside. It's self-adhesive, you can see. And I stuck the, the first uh, ring around the outside. And then once I had that done, I actually went back and I stuck another ring around the, um, the inside there. So it hit that little angled uh, piece on the motor so it would really seal good. So... There's the first piece there, and you can see that's just the perfect size for the seal and everything. And I did put some grease on the face of it that's going to be moving uh, for so it wouldn't be sticky or anything. And it was time to just kind of go try and see how everything would fit on the snowblower now. And there you could see that little pocket that was drilled in the end of the shaft there. And it turned out I did get the set screw up in the perfect spot that I wanted so it went down and bottomed out and actually bottomed right out in that pocket and kind of just acted as a sheer surface so it wasn't trying to hold it and then I had to machine off that other side of the winch bracket for supporting the drum there and I just machined off the radius on it as you can see and Here's that Evolution Swarf Collector that I got a while ago and I really enjoyed that thing that works really good when you're you know, machining any kind of magnetic material makes it really easy to clean up. And then I had to take those two little raised ribs off the back of that bracket also so I'd have a flat mounting surface. So I just took it, stood it up there and ran it in the mill. So that's what the bracket looks like now. And those are the two counter sunk mounting holes the original mounting holes in there so I'm just gonna stick this back on the motor there and just kind of get everything in place just to get an idea and make sure that it looks like it's gonna work and what it's gonna take to mount it so I guess you can see I've got it just clamped in place with a welding clamp and a little spacer there and um, it's hooked up to a 5 amp battery charger right now and it seems to be turning fine so I think it's going to be work out really good and found out exactly where the mounting had to be and um, it did surprise me. It turned it a little bit faster than I thought it was going to. So back into the shop with the bracket and now it's time to add the couple of mounting holes to mount this to that chute rotator. So first thing I did is I just uh, threw it into bridge port. That's the easiest way to add holes to something. Um, you just it, it, you know, everything stays in line real easy and it's uh, very easy to just uh, hold the dimension using the, the DRO on it and this DRO is probably from the late 70s or something like that but it still works good and still is very accurate so I got it I put them wound up putting them an inch apart I did get four holes in there and uh, four flat spots there so it looks like that'll be plenty and then the, I brought in that, that gear, that turner um, assembly from the snowblower and it actually had a little bit of weld sticking up in the one spot where I wanted to mount this winch motor. So I had to first grind that off and then I did this uh, the hard way, doing it by hand, trying to spot it and get the holes in the right position. But sometimes that's a 
a little bit tougher, but I didn't feel like setting it up on the bridge port, so that's what I chose to do. So I got the outer hole, the two outer holes uh, lined up and drilled first, and just used a pilot drill for a quarter twenty tap. And the material looked thick enough to hold a thread in it. Um, so I think I'm gonna try this first, and I can always go back and put a couple nuts on the inside if I have to later. But for now, I'm just threading them into there, and they were able to tighten up fine and everything. So I got the two outer taps in, and I got it mounted. Uh, I used some nuts that I drilled out for spacers. They turned to be turned out to be just the right size. So I got all the holes in there, everything mounted, and um, ready to go. And just threw a little bit of black paint on the area where I had ground the paint away there to remove that weld flash that was ticking over. And then before putting everything together for the final assembly, I decided to pop the uh, planetary gear assembly there full of some JT6 grease. And also put some of the uh, JT6 up in the spline and stuff to hopefully keep moisture from being able to get in there later and... Um, also to just hopefully keep anything from freezing together or locking up. So I got that all together. You can see the seal on the, the end of that piece there too that mates with the face of the motor there. So I'm thinking this should be a good setup for winter use. And then it's just a matter of putting those two counter sunk screws back in to hold it all together. So there's what it looks like all together and that's what I wound up having to do to use it as a drive system and it is a reversible one with the remote so it looks like it's going to work out good and I actually mounted the remote box right down on that chute rotator also and just ran the wires up so that way I just have to plug in the 12 volts to the tractor and there's nothing mounted to the tractor to operate this. And I hooked it up to a little 5 amp battery charger just to play with and try and hold the button down until the blue light comes on and then you have uh, the two different arrows for rotation, forward or reverse. That worked out good and then I just took it back out and mounted the assembly back on the blower and you can see there where actually it works really good. It turns at a decent speed. I didn't think it would be turning quite so fast. Um, turned at a decent speed and the uh, thing had to brake on it so it stops exactly where you want it and it uh, takes about half a second to start after you push the rotation button but you have to get used to that I guess but actually it looks like it's going to be a um, real good addition to the snowblower and I won't need that crank handle anymore I'll just mount this little remote control up on the dash with some velcro it did turn out, you know, being a pretty clean assembly, pretty clean to mount assembly and everything. And I've got it pretty much weatherproofed, I think, now, and it should uh, work out good. So I just thought I'd share this with you to just show how exactly how these Harbor Freight winches are made and what it takes to try to use them to drive something other than a winch. Now the amp draw on this thing is so low using it this way that I don't think there's any kind of a duty cycle you have to worry about on it either. It just stays cool as can be no matter how long you run it. Next I'll be making the polycarbonate shield for the back of the tractor. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.